Okay, so this is sort of a request from Zornbringers, I guess. He uh, posted something in the Discord, maybe a serious game discussion about, hey, you're struggling with the ZF6, what is your role and position? Any hints for you? Let's try and look at what the ZF6 does and uh, see if we can kind of ascertain any idea off that. So concealment wise, you just run the gamut down. She's gonna be at a 5.8, it's pretty sexy. Uh, we do have a whole bunch of builds and stuff. <clears throat> she does not have sonar. Instead, what she has is a main battery reload booster. And if we look at the guns, uh, rocking it at about a 3.5 seconds, so similar to the Z52, uh, kind of whatever, in terms of the guns. Basically, 1500 damage on the HE, 3000 damage on the AP, of course, 50 damage difference, but who cares? Uh, so, really, it comes down to where can you exert pressure through your guns? And with only a 12 click range, uh, granted some very accurate gunplay, I do believe that is very similar to what the Z52 can output, but at a tier 5. So, uh, these are slow. They're not. They're just shorter range. All right. So, let's look at her in terms of a gunboat that with smoke and uh, the ability to kind of take a position, maybe a uh, fleet support or maybe a little isolated. Really, she's going to come down to where can she exert a lot of damage influence, probably with her AP shells. So this is going to look into uh, some cruiser damage. This can look into some DD damage, but uh, that's really where this is going to live. All right, so let's look at the replay. First things first, we get some spotting off of the initial carrier movement. And we've got the ZF6, you know, our hero is down here. Got an Oster mid against a Neustra. This is going to be Cockblock Island, it's just going to stare at each other. Got a Lightning and a Fletcher that are probably going to be looking to make plays. As you can see, two DDs, one DD, probably a single destroyer over here. These guys might move in, try to bully this destroyer, force him off. And uh, with the double smoke that a Lightning and Fletcher provide, they can probably deal with CV attacks. Um, but the ZF6 at this point, you've got a radar, you've got double DDs double battleship and it looks like your team is looking to uh, lemming away from you that's going to be a problem and let's actually move the uh screen thing over so you're going to keep going double dds have now taken the cap you did actually start to turn but then came back in now if we look at the position on the ships you've still got some people kind of taking middling positions <clears throat> marco polo has sort of moved over to support but if these two ships come over and push you, the Nizenau is not going to take them out. Duke of York might chuck some HE. Marco Polo is going to overpen uh, because of the sap shell mechanic. You'll have some support, but you could absolutely, you know, if these two destroyers come right out here, all of a sudden you're in a bully fight and all you get to do is run. Uh, really at this point, if we think of what the map influence is, your double DDs are pressuring the Oland. They've mostly moved over for an AB strat. You guys are mostly looking at a BC kind of gig. So the influence line on this map is kind of like this. And the Oland is behind the influence line on your team. So likely this person dies. And you are in front of the influence line on your team. You might actually just want to hold back. Um, just basically play this position. Trying to lead in front of your uh, battleships, just kind of cover in case they over push. Because if you can catch the DDs here, then you might have the ability with all the way to this gunpower to just rip them apart while staying alive. But instead, I think you just sort of hold this position as they continue to move forward and aggressively bully. So again, you're kind of holding this position. Um, I think you start to do damage soon. Synop is pushing, Bismarck is pushing, you do have Torps, uh, looks like the DDs are contained for the moment, although it does look like uh, the Nisenau is currently eating all kinds of crap. Um, so I think you start shooting, I don't know at what. You do have a CV that has spotted your position, you've now lost a battleship, the Marco Polo has fled, the Nagato is now the focus target and is getting smashed. Um, the more that your team dies and isolates, the more that you're going to be stuck on your own. And I do believe that's exactly what happens. The influence line that we drew, that DD is dead. Lightning's rotating over, Fletcher's coming back into the fight. These kind are kind of figuring stuff out. Mostly this is just kind of a clusterfuck in the mid. 
But if we continue watching this pretty soon, you still got the CV on top of you. And now the Bismarck is pushing you, the Schultz has pushed through, the Synop is pushing. You are completely isolated from your team or any support. And it comes down to how are you going to single kill a Bismarck while an F Schultz is firing at you, while a Synop could be firing at you, maybe if he's able to, to chuck that island. <clears throat> I mean, at this point, you're operating behind enemy lines and you don't have guns big enough to handle the situation. So you are running. F. Schultz comes on top of you, runs you down, and then you get run down and killed. So, at this point, I guess you've left, you've lost the match. So, this flank has fallen, which is not unsurprising. They had a lot of assets over here. And, I mean, you can only piss on the fire so much before you run out of piss. And the fire broke loose, it started rampaging across other areas, and you didn't get out in time. So, you lost a battleship, you lost another battleship, Marco Polo fucked off. He's over here. Even the Kaga is getting ripped up by the breaking of this flank. And you just, you guys weren't able to convert this forward. So let's try and think about what could you have done knowing that you're going to either be supporting, uh, supporting a situation, maybe not from the, like either in the front line where you're trying to drill a DD with your reload booster, just trying to throw out a bunch of damage, or pulling back a little bit and playing a little bit like a mini cruiser. Where you're kind of chucking shells down range around 10 to 12 clicks, maybe from a smoke screen or something. So we come forward, we see this push, which is a lot. We see the majority of your force is on this section of the map, in which case you could fall back maybe to this position, where you're kind of buffering in case the DDs come through. That way you're able to spot the DDs if they move forward, you can hammer into them, etc. But maybe you're over here to try to spot. You do have a CV. The CV will latently spot as he comes over to strike into stuff. And pretty much all the targets are over in this area. So rather than being in the two line, maybe if you swung over to the four line, you've got an oyster that's going to kind of hold down mid. You can kind of hold down the A flank, but in a protective gesture. In case they start to push through, you can match them and you have support. Also, by being over here, it is possible the teammates are reading your position as a thing that they could try to support and push through, so they may actually be moving over to assist you, but unable to do so under the weight of fire that can cross into this area. So I think at this point, you've decided, oh wow, that's a lot. You just, instead of turning around and staying in the square, you turn around and you come over here so that you can start bracing Oyster's holding the mid flank. These two are actually aggressively pushing this flank, will eventually kill the Uland, and you brace this flank. So if they do push through, you get spots on them. You have a whole bunch of shells coming down range to shoot this area, this area. You can flood torps to slow them down. You can smoke to chuck in fire if you're not radared by the Baltimore. Um, I think this is where you end up getting isolated and split off from your team. And if you're over here, theoretically, if the flank breaks, you can pull back with your team. Smoke the Kaga, smoke retreating stuff, although smoking battleships kind of silly. <clears throat> Still though, I mean, you can ride the motion of the team movement as a destroyer that's primarily using guns through, that's not from like a, a, an incredible distance away.